Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. I know you're probably wondering where I've been for the last week and why I haven't been making any content during a major, like, 10.0.5 patch, big feral changes and all that kind of stuff. Well, basically, just my PC died on me on, like, Wednesday last week, and I haven't been able to put out any content since then, really. Luckily, I was able to record the podcast with Guilty and Snoopy discussing some stuff about 10.0.5 and Feral in general so far this expansion. But uh, beyond that, I haven't been able to do anything for a week, so I've been completely out of the loop. But luckily, I've been able to get a new PC sorted and figured out. And I have been able to play with Feral for the last two days and check it out with the new patch stuff uh, in the fray, like with the new talents and everything and new tuning. And so I've got... A little bit of an idea of how I'm feeling about things so far. So I wanted to make this video talking about uh, the basically the most asked questions that have been on my stream lately over the last two days. You know, is Bleed Feral dead? Is Lion Strength better than Blood Talons? Can I, you know, can I play Blood Talons anymore? Is the rotation super simple? All this kind of stuff. So I, I want to talk about all this and then kind of just give you my thoughts about Feral in general in terms of whether I feel we've improved or not because of these changes. So. So, so far, like, like I say, I've only had two days to really mess with things. And in a week's time or two weeks' time, my opinions might change from this video. But so far, I don't think that Bleed Feral is dead whatsoever. Like, at all. I really don't think that Bleed Feral is dead. I think that it's totally fine. I think that, yes, we could probably get more bleed damage. But we don't need 100% of our damage to come from bleeds to, for us to be a bleed-based spec. And I think that there's a lot of stuff right now that Feral can do to really emphasize our bleed play. With things like Sabertooth, Rip and Tear, um, with Circle, with Double Clawed Rake, Blood Talons. Like, all these things that I think are really quite good to surround that kind of gameplay. So I think Bleed Feral is totally fine. It's still doing like 60 plus percent of our damage. The vast majority of our damage coming from Bleed. So I want to just quash that right there. I think Bleed Feral is totally fine in Mythic Plus generally speaking. In Raid it might be a little bit different. I know some people are going Lion Strength in some boss kills instead of Blood Talons now. But I think that's not every single boss, and I think that we'll have to see kind of how that pans out. I think on pure single target, Lion Strength might be just pulling ahead of Blood Talons a little bit right now. But I think part of that might be based around the fact that you're playing with Relentless Predator as a talent, which is allowing you to use Ferocious Bite at a lower energy point, which I think is complementing the Lion Strength gameplay, I, I would imagine. Uh, and you're just trying to bite as much as you possibly can, particularly during your incon windows, where you're probably just like shred bite, shred bite, shred biting, which is probably not fun for a lot of people, and I get that. But I think generally speaking, when you're playing Mythic Plus and stuff like that, and you're playing these varied raid fights, there is a lot of bleed stuff going on, so I don't think Bleed Feral is dead at all. However, the question of Blood Talons or Lion Strength, I think that's definitely a more interesting one. I see where people are coming from, where they're worried about Lion Strength being potentially stronger than Blood Talons, the reason that's come about is, again, I think some people... It's come about because of the the ability for us to now take Taste for Blood. And I'll, and I'll kind of show off the, some, some talents here a little bit for a moment. So, this was the build that I used to play last week. This is what I was playing. But I'm now currently playing something like this, where I've literally just removed Tireless Energy and instead taken Taste for Blood. Now, what that's doing is that's now emphasizing a more bite-based gameplay. That doesn't mean that bite's doing more damage than rip, not at all. Not even really close. But it does mean that now we want a lot more value from our bites. Whereas before, what I used to do in Mythic Plus was playing Blood Talons, is bite was acting as a facilitator for my Sabertooth. It was allowing my rip to really shine, okay? It was the alley-oop to my, to my Blood Talons. That's and to my Primal Wrath. That's what Bite was doing. But now with Taste for Blood, we're getting this roughly 15% damage increase on our Bite. That's then having that ripple effect with Rampant Ferocity, which I believe also got a buff during the patch changes. So now there is a real reality where you do want your Bites to be having some good damage, whereas before I could do a Blood Talons Primal Wrath into another Blood Talons Primal Wrath, and then maybe I squeeze in a Bite or two and a couple Apex procs and stuff like that. Now it's like, well, I want my Rips to be powerful, but I really want my Bites to be powerful as well. Therefore, Lion Strength just means that, like, consistently, every single finisher, on average, is going to be more impactful than it was before. So I think that's where the value of Lion Strength is really coming in. And then some people are playing with Relentless Predator, 
which again could squeeze in more bites, which again emphasizes just kind of being able to bite whenever you can. However, for me in Mythic Plus specifically, I don't see Relentless Predator really having high value unless it was potentially a tyrannical week. But even then, I don't know that I would 100% want to take it. I think I can potentially get some uh, single target gain elsewhere, right? Because if I have a choice between this ability, which only has an effect basically on single target, or having, say, MOC, which is an ability which affects my single target and my AoE and my energy regen, I, in theory, would prefer to have Moment of Clarity. Over the course of a whole dungeon, I feel like I would extract more from this, even on a Tyrannical Week, compared to, say, something like this, which is purely an energy talent, and is going to allow you to, yes, get more damage because you have more energy, but this allows me more energy, and I get extra damage, and it works in single target, and AoE, and cleave, and everything. So these are the kind of decisions I'm making when it comes to Mythic Plus, and where I personally am not necessarily going to take that talent. But uh, yeah, hopefully that kind of clears up a little bit about Lion Strength and why it's suddenly become competitive because of the changes to a couple of other talents. Now, I don't know that I think that Lion Strength is better than Blood Talents. Like, I think in Mythic Plus, Blood Talents is probably still pulling ahead, but only by a little bit. Whereas before, it was, I think, more significantly pulling ahead. Now it's a lot closer together, and I feel like you can play either or, and you'll be just fine. I am probably still going to continue to play Blood Talons when I really want to sweat it out. But when I want to chill and I just want to talk to stream and I want to relax a little bit, that's when I'll flip back into just playing Lion Strength and just taking it easy. So hopefully that's kind of like a little bit of good information there for you guys. Uh, and then, you know, there, there are other questions, I guess, that people can be asking in terms of like, well, can I still play Unbridled Swarm? I think Unbridled Swarm is still an okay choice to make, and I think that you can still play it on, say, Fortified. But I think right now, Double CI is just being very effective for me, and I'm very happy with just running this, uh, and I'm okay with, with just playing it like this. The only thing with playing a build like this is that now I'm losing tireless energy, so I am a little bit energy starved, so keep that in mind. This is like a standard build that I'm playing with right now on Fort. On Tyrannical, I might switch it up a little bit, and I could even play something like that. Though I imagine I play this still, because I think it's just so solid. Something I still haven't been able to test yet is Convoke. I, that's something that I do want to check out. I've done a little bit of Unbridled Swarm testing, but not enough. I think that, by all means, try it out. And I would encourage you to all try different builds. You know, try playing with LI if you want to. Try, you know, FF and Adaptive, or FF and CI, however you want to do it. Uh, try Unbridled, try Convoke, 1 minute Convoke, 2 minute Convoke. Um, you know, whatever you're feeling, I, th I think I think go for it. I think that uh, if you are going to be playing Lion Strength, though, there is a potential to want to play with Wild Slashes instead of Brutal Slash, because Wild Slash, now, if it, before when you were playing Blood Talons, you would very much be in that cycle of Rake, Thrash, Brutal Slash, Rake, Thrash, Brutal Slash, and that was how you're basically doing every finisher. Uh, you know, every every five common point generator, that's what you were doing. But if you're playing Lion Strength, you don't want to be thrashing more than just once to apply it to everything. And then keep it ticking over, you know? You don't want to keep spamming Thrash. You want to Rake, but you'll run out of mobs to Rake quite quickly because you're not doing that rake thrash brutal slash anymore so you run out of targets to rake spread onto so then it's like okay well if i only have three brutal slashes and i run out of rake spreading what do i do i'm gonna have to either shred or i'm gonna have to thrash particularly during incon windows this is when it's most potent that you're just losing damage so that's where uh wild slashes can definitely come into play i personally so far have still been finding that i've been okay with brutal slash and i've been like, I like, I prefer this gameplay, so I'm okay with it. But I think that you can absolutely be playing Wild Slashes. In many situations, it's probably going to be better for you. That that still means that you're going to want to continue to rake spread on everything. But outside of that window, when everything's raked up and you have Thrash on the targets, now you can just swipe spam as much as you need to. And during your incon window, it can be quite effective to, to, to be swiping there. The last thing that I think people wanted me to cover as well is like, in AoE, should I be Primal Wrath spamming or Bite spamming? And I'm generally speak like, 
generally in AoE, unless you're in your Incon window, you don't really have enough energy and stuff and combo point generation to be Primal Wrathing and maintaining that within your tow window, as in reapplying Primal Wrath with four more seconds remaining on your rips. You don't really have time to be biting because your Primal Wrath is gonna, your rips are gonna drop too low on their timer. But during your Incon window, you can absolutely bite. But what I like to do is get two big, healthy Primal Wraths so that you have the, I think it's something like 11 second duration on your Primal Wrath on every mob, on rip. And then that's when I'll squeeze in, that's when I'll squeeze in a good handful of bites, a good four or five bites or something, and then look to reapply my Primal Wrath. And then coming out of my Incon window, I have to return to basically just Primal Wrathing, unless I get an Apex proc, and then I'll send the bites. But that's what I've been doing so far. I don't think that it's going to necessarily be perfectly optimal yet, but we're still working on it and we'll uh, kind of see how it goes. But what I will say is in terms of like how Feral's been performing is I think that we've been doing really quite well. I've definitely seen a damage increase, but it's always hard to tell when you go from a tyrannical week to a fortified week, whether that's really like, whether the difference was tyrannical fortified differences or if it was a case of, uh, you know, new changes have come through and we're that much stronger. But I do generally think that we are stronger and I've been getting higher overalls in pretty much every key I've been doing thus far. And so I think Feral's in a pretty solid spot. I think we're in a good state. I don't think we can really complain from a damage standpoint. From a gameplay standpoint, I get it. If you don't really like Lion Strength when you want to be Blood Talons, uh, using Blood Talons, then I get that. But I think generally speaking, I think we're fine. I think our damage is good. I think we've just gotten a little bit tankier as well with our class tree. So that's good. The only things I'm still bothered about are Innovate in cap form and Battle Res in cap form. Everything else is, well, I ain't in cap roar in cap form, but you know, that's just, uh, it is what it is. Apart from that, I'm pretty happy right now. I'm pretty comfortable. I don't feel threatened. And yeah, I think we're in a good spot. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you've been finding. Hopefully this video was helpful and thank you. I'll see you in the next one.